welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy today i'm going to be discussing the first of the spfbo books that i am judging for the spfbo contest this year if you're not familiar with the contest it is the self-published fantasy blog off it is a contest that was founded by mark lawrence in order to shine a spotlight on self-published fantasy and i am very privileged this year for SPFBO number nine to be one of the judges. There are 10 panels or judges as it were, and some of them consist of a group of people. Some of them like myself are just individuals. Each of us gets 30 of the 300 books that are entered into the contest. And of those 30, I'm going to be whittling down them down to five semi-finalists. And from those five semi-finalists, I'm going to be choosing one finalist, which will go up against nine other finalists and of course one will win it all but today i'm going to talk about my first semi-finalist pick and also five other really wonderful worthy books for you to consider i believe that all six of these books will have a great audience there's definitely a lot of people who would appreciate the books that i'm about to tell you about so let me tell you about the first five that will not be moving on to becoming semi-finalists, though I believe that many people will enjoy these reads, and then I will go into the semi-finalist, one of five. So here we go. The first book that I want to introduce to you is called A Single Spark. It is book one of the Fay Touched Exiles by Mandy Burkhead. Now, this is a book that is a YA fantasy. It is most definitely reminiscent of something by Holly Black. I haven't read a ton of Holly Black, but I've read a little bit. Uh, and so I can say that it gives me that, that feel. Uh, there are LGBTQ plus characters in there, and there is some great magic in there, as well as uh, it heavily features the fairy. Also, there are some animal companions, some shape-shifting, and a long journey as well as some romance. The second book that I want to tell you about that is not going on to be a semi-finalist but is most definitely a worthy read is also a YA fantasy and it is called Mystic Mist. It is book one of the new Breed series. It is by Lisa Van Diver. And this is, as I said, a YA fantasy. It has interactions between our world and creatures from other worlds, otherworldly creatures. <laughs> and, and in the face, what we have here is really an invasion, an invasion of us uh, set in actually New England, familiar territory for me, um, but it's a, a, a fight for survival that features woodland fairies. Now, the third book I want to tell you about that I think is worthy of your attention is called a Twist of Fate. It is book one of Orders Trials by Austin Windsor. Now, this is a fantasy that features some morally complex characters, and the protagonist is, in fact, a bounty hunter. Uh, but there's also a sorceress, a freedom fighter, and a crime syndicate leader. And so, also a vampire, as well as other fantasy races. And next, I want to talk about The Dungeon That Walks Like a Man. And that is a, uh, a, a, the first installment of the Mimic Dungeon series. And it's by Alex Raisman. And this is a book that is a lit RPG. And it is specifically a Yaga Core adventure. Now, I do think it would be somewhat helpful if you are familiar with Yaga Core to engage with this book. However, I will say there is some really strong writing and some quirkiness that I really enjoyed. And also just some visceral, visceral <laughs> events, very well described. Uh, but uh, it's highly original. It also has these instructions in it. So I, I, I think that if you're someone who loves lit RPG, this would be a definite book to check out for you. Um, and it features demons as well as, I said it's quirky, a walking house. <laughs> so, and then finally we have The Path to Vihan. And this is book one of the Man of the Mountain series. It is by Daniel Lyons. Now, this is uh, set in the magical world of Ferasio. And you have Adima the Elf is the protagonist. 
And uh, though Adima is born in a female body, he actually knew from an early age that he was a boy. And so, yes, this is uh, about a story about, yes, in some ways, the alignment of a transgender person, but it is also an adventure in a world with magic weapons and demons. And now, without further ado, I will talk about the semifinalists, one of five that I'm going to be considering for the finalists that I will forward to the final round. And this book is called A Gamble of Gods. It is book one in The Order of the Dragon. It is by Mitriel Faywood. And I just want to say as an aside uh, that I think that is the coolest name for a fantasy author you could have, Mitriel Faywood. <laughs> so uh, A Gamble of Gods is not so much genre bending as it is genre smashing. It openly takes fantasy and science fiction and collides them. And it even directly asks about the differences between fantasy and science fiction. So it, it deliberately engages with that by asking what is magic versus what is technology and how different are these things. It does this through three main protagonists who are pictured on the cover. My personal favorite of the three is without a doubt Connor, but I also did enjoy the arcs of Selena and Christian. And so you also have these three really having to learn a lot about the history behind who they are and how to interact with one another, as well as to uh, learn how to fight for their very survival. There is a strong sort of mystery element here as they are really trying to figure all this out. And the character, uh, along with the characters, the reader is trying to figure it all out. Uh, and the Order of the Dragon is perhaps one of the biggest mysteries of all, which is, of course, part of the title. So not really a spoiler, uh, but it is a fun thing to watch the characters figure out what exactly this is. Uh, now, I think it was a very bold choice to smash these genres together, but perhaps an even bolder, more ambitious choice was to make this all first-person narration, and not just one narrator, but several narrators. They're multiple first-person narrators, which is a very unusual choice and bold, and there are certain advantages that Mitriel Faywood definitely takes advantage of with these first person narrators. One of which is, it really does give you a flavor of the characters. It really gives you some insight into who they are and what makes them tick. Now, of course, it, there are some risks as well in having all of these uh, first person narrators. For one thing, we know that if the, the narrator is telling the scene in past tense, that somehow the narrator survived the scene. So that's a kind of a spoiler in a way. Uh, and it is just a very difficult thing to pull off. And I think for the most part, Faywood did a very good job with this. I would say that she succeeded in giving these characters, especially the three protagonists, distinct voices. Uh, so I would also like to say that the, uh, the spirit of A Gamble of Gods is very playful with some really fun popular cultural references, uh, including something like Star Wars or I think Indiana Jones. A lot of fun to figure that out. But it is most definitely in spite of that fun playful element is definitely adult fantasy. So there's humor and there's action and there's romance. Uh, and I found myself a little bit impatient in regard to the romance. However, I think you're doing something right if your reader is wanting you to hurry up and get these people together. So <laughs> uh, in a way, that's, I suppose, a compliment to the storytelling. Also, there are some major heavy themes in there, such as anxiety and depression along with some world-hopping action and some really just wonderful interactions between these main characters. So I finished the book really keen to continue with the series and to uh, read on with this really ambitious story that Mitriel Faywood has started.